One of the things I do in my commentaries is engage with the history of interpretation, uh, past and present. And one of the things in, uh, that I do in um, my research is to recover forgotten women interpreters. So I've brought a lot of those voices into the text. Uh, what have women had to say about Ruth and Esther? And um, I put in a few poems, uh, allusions to dramas, because it's, uh, well, the book of Ruth, for example, tells us more about women's lives than any other book in the Old Testament. It's a short book, 85 verses, 55 are dialogue, and we have more women's speech in the book of Ruth than any other book. So it's very interesting to see how women have responded to both of those books. Um, and I've tried to bring in some of their interpretations and interpretations of men throughout history. I also think we, in our time, we need to read with global voices uh, because I think they hear these texts in ways that we don't. And I think they hear issues of migration and immigration in the Book of Ruth, which is very important in our time. So I think they can, we're, we're challenged as a church to be like Boaz, to be Boazes to the Ruths out there. The structure of the, the commentary is, um, is pretty uh, straightforward. It begins with an introduction to the book. When was it written? Why was it written? The key themes, the outline of the book. Um, and then as we get into the individual chapters of each, uh, it, it's structured according to this commentary, the story of God. So the first one is to read this story, read each chapter within its, ancient, within its canonical context and also within the context of the ancient world. And I found that uh, very helpful to do. Um, it, it just opens up the text and helps you understand images and uh, verses that um, and, and, and actually corrects how we read the text. I mean, the book of Ruth isn't a Cinderella story, it's an ancient story. And she's probably not a beautiful peasant woman with long hair, but rather strong, sweaty farmer woman, right? So reading in, in its ancient context is very important. And then we have uh, an explanation of the verses, like traditional exegesis, verse by verse, uh, you know, un explicating difficult verses or words just to help understand the text. And then the third part of each chapter would be how to live the text. And that's where um, I really work hard to say, what difference does this chapter make in our lives as Christians today? And we listen to present voices, past voices, and global voices, because I think um, each chapter is arguably one we can preach and one that really speaks to our congregations, our students, everyday people. When I was preparing the text, um, I, I read the text with students, I read the text with friends at church, and I really tried to um, make it relevant to people's lives today. So this, this, this three-part structure is used in each chapter of the uh, Book of Ruth and also uh, the Book of Esther. Again, you have an introduction to the Book of Esther that looks at the key issues, the dates, the versions, uh, the literary aspects of the book, because both Esther and Ruth are beautifully structured books. Are, they're artistically beautiful. Uh, one have a, has a chiastic structure. And then, um, so we look at the issues that come up, the theological problems, the themes of the, pro the, themes of the book, and then we get in again to each chapter and look at it in the context of the ancient Persia, using insights from people like Herodotus, because Herodotus in his history wrote on Xerxes. I talk about Xerxes a lot. And he characterized Xerxes in a way that's very similar to the book of Esther. He's impulsive, he loves women, he drinks too much, he makes bad decisions. Uh, and that helps us read the book of Esther and help, helps us know how to take these characters seriously or not. I had a number of people in mind when I was writing this commentary. One is the small group I'm involved in at church. Uh, we were reading Ruth and Esther together. So I had their questions in mind as I was uh, writing this, but I also teach this book. And I often do women's breakfasts and a study group, uh, various study groups in churches. And I, um, so I wanted to make it speak into the lives of real people. 
And my students at, at Wycliffe College, where I teach, are a diverse group. We have uh, people from many denominations and many people from all over the world. So I wasn't just addressing a typical, a typical, say, white audience, but rather a global group. So that's why I really worked hard in trying to bring in uh, global voices, issues, issues that are relevant to the world as we live in it. Um, so, I, so I had had, you know, women and men, pastors real people, my adult children, I had them all in mind. I do, I would encourage pastors and students um, and and just people, normal people in the pew to, ha to read uh, my commentary on Ruth and Esther. I think it uh, has the potential of opening these books up to deeper um, insights. And I think both of them have the potential of changing our lives and helping us to understand how God works uh, in, today in, in how we experience God, working behind the scenes uh, for a bigger plan.